Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Kattner. I'm going to share with you a very interesting patient that I saw who um, had or has something called a lateralizing pain syndrome. This is a pain syndrome is a uh, central, so this is a malfunction of your central pain system. So part of your pain system starts to amplify messages from a portion of your body. And um, there are all many different kinds. There's usually regional, so it can just affect one area. But a lateralizing means that one half of your body, all the amplifiers are turned on. So this poor fellow, he initially injured, I think, his arm, but it then gradually, the pain gradually spread to affect one half of his body. It was very, very disabling. Uh, he, it really interfered a lot with his life. And he tried all kinds of treatments and he came to see me. When I sit down with somebody who has a complex pain, I spend a long time to really get the hang of what is actually going on. I need to get a feeling inside so that I get it. So we spent a lot of time talking and one of the questions I asked him was, when is your pain at its best? And then he got thoughtful and he said, you know, now I just pray see this with, or is that I live in New Zealand. So New Zealand is an island sitting in the middle of the Pacific. And New Zealand is fairly far down south. So the winters can be um, not brutal, but they can be pretty cold. In fact, the further down you go, there can be, you know, there's, there's great mountains and skiing and so on and so forth. The winters can be pretty cold. And he said, you know, what I do is I escape the winter by going up to the islands, which is what a lot of New Zealanders do. And so the islands are all the South Pacific Islands, which are just gorgeous. The biggest of the islands is Fiji. And he said, I go to Fiji and I actually do work there. And it's work that I love. He said, it's just, it's my happiest time of the year. I go there, the people are great. It's warm, it's beautiful. And I'm doing this work, which I enjoy, I'm engaged. And then he, <laughs> he sort of had a little and I just about have no pain at all. And I said, well, why don't you live there? Which would be, he said, oh, no, 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 I can't. Um, because the summers are just terribly hot and they, they're awful. And I actually, my business is such that I have to come back to New Zealand. I've got family here. So I live these two lives. The one is in New Zealand where it's much more pressured I'm under much more tension and I have this horrible pain and then I go to Fiji and for three months I'm just cruising with hardly any pain. So now this is interesting. You see what we know is that uh, if you look at the statistics of in places where people are very meticulous and keep magnificent statistics and that's Scandinavia. So here you have people who are, um, uh, you know, very precise and they have terrible winters. So Scandinavia, not only does it get freezing cold, but the days get shorter and shorter and shorter until, depends on how far north you are, you've got, you know, the sun rises at 11.30 and sets at 3. So you've got this little bit of sunshine and you've got this long, long, long nights. Now, Scandinavians because they, uh, you know, they've got many ways of coping with this because they're very adaptive people. But what, you know, when, they, when you look at their records, what you find is that the incidence of everything bad goes like this. It peaks. And everything bad is death, all kinds of accidents, all kinds of illnesses, and for, for what we're talking about, chronic pain. Chronic pain gets much worse as the days get shorter and as it gets colder. And I have a colleague, a fascinating guy who works further down south in New Zealand, who did a study where he took a group of people. Now, he, he's in Wellington, which 
uh, is famous in New Zealand for having just wind, just wind pouring in. It comes in from the Antarctic and through the winter, it, through the Antarctic, focuses itself all on Wellington and just pours through this icy, icy wind. So this, my, my colleague had this group of patients who had chronic pain of different sorts, it was irrelevant, and what he did was he organized for them to have a sauna twice a week for I think it was seven or eight weeks. And what happened over this time was that their pain dramatically improved. Uh, to the extent that for some of them it no longer became an issue. Ding! I mean, so now we're hearing something which is fascinating. This man with the lateralizing pain went to a very warm environment. Someone down in Wellington in winter had these saunas and the saunas needed to be hot. Hot saunas and uh, 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 he suggested moist, so hot moist saunas, which is where you pour stuff on, so the real traditional Scandinavian sauna. Aha! So this is one of, now, now it starts becoming clearer that the Scandinavians and the Russians have a long tradition of saunas. They, I think the Scandinavians call saunas, they, they, and they have a whole um, ritual that goes into having these saunas which last, can last for hours and hours and hours and it's a whole family thing and friends and, and you go in and out and, and this is one of the ways that they get their way through these horrible cold winters. So we talked about this and my, my colleague had a theory which he was actually able to show that you reset your hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a gland deep in your brain which sends messages to the pituitary which sends out a lot of the hormones that balance our body. So when it gets, starts getting colder you start your, your um, pituitary starts sending messages out to the adrenal glands to say it's going to be trouble, turn up the stress hormones. If however you warm everything up, what happens is you get, you reset your hypothalamus which then resets the pituitary to say chill. Oh no, chill is the wrong word isn't it? <laughs> to say relax. Everything's just very very uh, much more relaxed and so what you get is less stress hormones, less winding up of your pain system. He was able to show not only over the period of time that they had their saunas did they feel better, but that effect continued on in, for quite a few months with varying degrees in different people. So this is another l little clue and for some people massive help that you can do is regular saunas and maybe just maybe regular hot bars but maybe that doesn't quite have the same effect. His was with saunas, the Scandinavian and Russian tradition is saunas. Uh, so another thought. So what happened was I suggested this to him and a little light went on. Now we were, we are no longer, we, because the winters, he, he, he's gone for the worst of the winters. So we, he started doing saunas through the summer, which is hot, um, but he did it and it helped to a degree. We then talked about the relationship between stress and pain, which is because his, Fiji was his happy place. And once he got the two together, having regular heat, as in a Fijian heat, which is warm and moist, or warm and humid, and um, then working on a mind-body stress thing, he was able to improve his pain significantly, not to quite as good as, as Fiji, but improved to quite a degree.